In this video, we're gonna look at the page tool. The page tool allows us to resize pages inside of one document. Let me quickly show you. I'm gonna get back to this letterhead in just a second. I'm gonna make a new document, just very quickly, three and a half by two, so business card size. Uh, no facing pages, and I'm gonna make the margins all the same, just very simply, no bleed, just keep it really, really easy here, and create. So what I have, I have a business card size, that's totally fine. Now I'm gonna design a business card in here, which is great, and then my client says, oh, you know what, I also want a letterhead. Now I could also potentially open up a new document, make another letterhead, or I could do everything in here and utilize the elements I've already used on my business card. So how do I do that? A couple different ways. I can make a new page. I can obviously just hold down option, click and drag, and I have a new page. I could click on a new page here, and I got a new page, or I could go to my drop down and insert pages, but really quickly, a new page. Now this particular page, I want to change the size of it. Now I use the page tool to do that. If I click on it, what shows up right away is a bounding box with its handles. And here, because the control panel is open, it'll adjust, change the options to the tool I have selected. So I have the page tool selected, select that page. What I can do is I can change it. So I can change it right up here, utilizing the width and height. I can also change it here, but if I do change it here, what happens is they both change together. And I kind of don't want that. I wanted this to say three and a half by two and this to change. The problem was they're controlled by the parent, this liquid page rule. So if I shut that off, what I'm able to do now is just change this one on its own separately. But when I just drag it out, it always just snaps it back to its original position. Well, the way to change that is if I hold option, it won't just uh, snap back. It'll actually stay where I originally had it and it'll kind of just drag it out. Now, once again, I can click and drag and the little uh, tooltip shows up next to my cursor right there on the, the gray box says, like, you know, five by two kind of ideally. I can stretch it out to whatever I want, but if I usually have a custom size, I'm just gonna put that up here. So let's say I wanna make eight and a half by 11. And there we go. So now I have a new page and it's inside the same document, but it is a different page and different page size inside there. Let's add one more piece of collateral. I'm just going to duplicate this, click and drag onto my plus sign. I could duplicate that. I'm going to do the same thing here, but this time I'm going to make a number 10 size envelope, 4.125 by nine and a half. And there I go. So now I have that set up and that's it. So now inside of one document, I have a business card. A, side, a page, I have a letterhead page, and I have a envelope page, and I could once again design something here and bring down those elements here and utilize those elements here. A really quick way to utilize the page tool. Now I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to look at this kind of random letterhead I set up for this company. Now normally I would never put a picture in there, but I just want to show you something about it. Um, what I can do is also open up a the paid liquid layout panel under layout. It's liquid layout. And now it's gonna give me some options I can see. Now, realistically, I could do everything here I want to in my page tool and on my control panel, but there's a few extra options down here that I'm gonna talk about. So right now, if I were to size up this page, I'm gonna go right, what I could do, let's take a look first off. Number one, I have my, offense, my, my option to change the reference point. I could start and drag it out from my top left or the center, whatever, that's fine. These are normal tools we have in InDesign. My X and Y, I could change. My width and height, as I just showed you, I could change. I could do change, use a preset, any one of these presets, and I could change it, that's fine too. And I could change up the orientation. What's new here are these options. So what I could do with a liquid page rule, what this allows me to do is take content that's already on the page and have it change based on how I've change the size of my page, the dimension. So if I make it smaller, how will it work? If I make it larger, how will this content resize more or less to the new dimensions? Now I could have the objects move with the page, of course, which is what I want. I could have to shut it off and they won't move in a certain way. Uh, I could show the current parent page, which is an eight and a half by 11. So my parent page will always show if I want just to show what the original parent page looked like. It's up to you how you want to do that. But these are the liquid page rules I'm going to go through. So right now it is off. So what happens when my content currently is here on my page and I start to move the structure of the page. It just stay, change the dimensions. If I have off, nothing's showing, nothing's happening. Let's just make sure here. There we go. I am going to now see nothing happen. So even if I hold down option to resize, nothing happens. This content stays exactly where it is. Just the dimensions of the page change. So even if I drag it down a little larger, once again, they don't change. What if I shrink it down a little bit? Once again, nothing changes. The content stays exactly where it is. It's held in place. Not a problem. That's fine. Let me go back. Okay. And once again, the same thing happens here. Off is here. Off is here. The same idea. Let's go to the next page. So now I'm going to try a different one. Let's try scale. Let's see what scale does. It changes here. No options for me to change. 
great. Even if I select things, nothing happens, great. So what I could do now, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. I can change up the size and look what happens. As I change the size, I'm not holding option if I, I don't want to, I just wanna see. No matter what happens, I am scaling the content. The content's getting bigger or smaller. So the content is changing based on the size and the dimensions of the page. The smaller I go, the smaller it scales. And remember, it looks like it's scaling proportionally. It's not stretching anything if I go left, if I make it wider, or stretching if I go taller. It's just changing it up proportionally, which is fantastic. Now, of course, if I hold shift, I could also keep the page in its proportion as well and keep that aspect ratio, which is fantastic. So it scales with it, very simple. My next option, if I look at my Let's look at here, recenter. So what happens here, nothing is going to scale, but it'll always keep it in the center no matter what happens. Now if I go too small, obviously it'll just reset. But what happens here, no scaling is happening. Everything's staying the exact same, but it's always staying in the center no matter what of this page, no matter what I choose to do, it'll always stay in the center, which is pretty great for that as well. Very simple, once again. Now we have a few other ones here. The object base and guide base are a little bit different, a little bit more involved, but they're still pretty uh, standard what we could do with them. If I choose on this, click on this one, I click guide based. Oh, sorry, I'll, this will be object based. I'll do guide base in a second. What I can do with this is each individual object, I could pin to where I want it to be, or I could say, no, I want it to flex a little bit with the, with the page changing the dimensions. So each one with my object base, if I click on this object, look what shows up here. I got a bunch of little options here, which is kind of interesting. I have kind of these, these padlocks, these locks that lock things into place. I have these other outside uh, circles that work. So let's just take a quick peek what I could do manually here um, on this page. So the padlocks I can change either to a lock or a free flowing idea where this will change the structure and it kind of gives you the tooltip what's going on there. So it's not locked, it will change and same with this one. So I could do a, a vertical lock or a horizontal lock or not I just click on them again. And then the outside are just pins where I want to pin it to the right side, I can pin it to the top, pin it to the left, and pin it to the bottom. There we go. Now, of course, I could click off of them. And now the other way I could do this as well, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. The other way I could do this as well is if I do a right, right here. So now liquid layout actually comes in handy, the panel where I can say, I wanna lock the height and the width. I'm oh, sorry, not lock the height and the width. I can click it off. So right now you can see that it's flowing. So I can make them change. I'm gonna show you what that means in a second. So I lock them. And of course I could pin the top, bottom and right, which I kind of just did manually. I just want to show you what that looks like. Now I believe if I pin the top, uh, the top left and right, obviously it'll just be pinned there because now that's structured. Left and right is just extra, which is not necessary. But either way, just to show you that. So what does all that mean? So let's play around with this a little bit just to get a sense of what we're talking about. So I'm not going to pin anything. I'm going to get rid of all the pins and I'm just going to move it. Now I left these unlocked, so they're gonna move. So if I move this, we can see that the actual object is getting squashed or stretched, which we don't love, especially proportionally. We don't want that. We always want things to scale proportionally. I'll undo that. And if I pull down the height, we can see that it's also kind of getting stretched. So now let's do the opposite. Let's uh, unlock, or sorry, let's lock those into place. And now what happens if I scale this, it stays scaled no matter what. Sorry, it stays proportional no matter what. It actually is not scaling. So I keep losing my place here, my apologies. It is not scaling here. Even if I scale it up proportionally from my diagonal there, it's always staying the same size. It's locked in, so it can't move. It won't scale, it won't stretch, it won't squeeze. It's great. That's kind of probably what I want. And like, I could do the same with every other object has its options, okay? So I could pin it. So this way, if I pin it to the top, meaning it'll always stay pinned to the top, no matter what happens. Uh, let me actually do a pin to the bottom and do this this way. So once again, it's pinned to the bottom. So therefore it's not pinned to the top, it's going to move. So I haven't pinned it, okay. So, and once again, if I pin it to, I'll get rid of that. I'll pin it to the, that's what I changed there. This is the one I want. I'll pin it to the left. Click on here, or of course I'm gonna click it there. And it's pinned to the left, but the right of course is moving. So well, that's kind of that idea where if I pin it, it stays pinned to that edge or it'll move depending if I don't pin it, of course. If I don't pin it, then of course it'll move whichever way I want it to move. So it's not pinned. So let's play around here a little bit. 
even this, I'm going to unlock this. If I unlock it, look what happens. It'll flex. The text frame is moving. It'll move vertically and horizontally. Okay. So it'll stretch. If I lock it in place, it will not stretch. The text frame will stay the exact same position. That's exactly how object base works. Object, and now I can do an, also an auto fit here. I have an option here. Now this one, it will change depending on the size of your picture. Right now, nothing is changing with this picture. Uh, it'll automatically fit it, uh, make the content inside of the frame fit properly. But this is just a small picture, not much is happening, which is fun. Uh, once again, each object I can pin or I can lock or I can not. It's entirely up to you how you want to work with that. But at least now you have the options of each individual object on the page moving or not moving, flexing or not flexing with the height and width and the change in dimensions of the page. Now, lastly, is guide base. Now, guide base is a little odd. I haven't used it much, but I've definitely seen the, the understanding of it, but it is a little bit odd. So what I can do here, if I click to object base now, Sorry, guide based, my apologies, guide based. If I click on guide based, what I'm able to do with the page tool selected, I'm able to drag out some guides. Now these guides are a little bit different. These guides I could drag down, and but they're not your normal guides. What you're gonna notice is that they are a dashed line, a cyan dashed line. And what it's doing, let's see what it does. I mainly, what the guide is doing, it is going through this particular text frame at the moment. Let's see what happens when I resize this page. When I drag out to the left, so I'm changing the, sorry, to the right, I'm changing the width, nothing is happening to that frame. However, when I drag up and down, I change the height, the text frame does move. So when I put a horizontal line in, it's keeping the same size of the frame is not moving it, but it's allowing the frame, this particular frame to move horizontally or sorry, vertically up and down. Okay, let's try this again. This time I'm gonna drag, drag out a guide from my ruler, which Command R will open up the rulers, Command R, Command R, and toggle them on and off, or of course view and rulers, hide rulers or show rulers. And now this one here, I'm actually have now this guide coming down, which is locked into a now vertical position. Let's see what happens. So when I change up the size, look what's happening. It's dragging out the width but it's now keeping the height the height stays the same no matter what so the guides control how you could lock something into place now if i want to i could have a guide go through obviously multiple objects this is a very lot of white space being used so i have a lot of control i can play around with it where once again this the set of type and this picture are being controlled by this long uh this horizontal guide so what's actually going to happen is it's going to allow for flex happening and stretching, which I don't love, um, to happen vertically, but not horizontally. Well, this one actually has two on it, so it will actually allow for both. But once again, this is how the guides work. If I drag, click and drag down this guide over top of the logo, it will not allow for any horizontal changes, but it will allow for vertical changes. So there's, and if I want to lock both, but then I just drag over top both. And actually, no, that's the opposite. They're not locked. Um, what I'm, the guide will actually allow, if both crosshairs go through it, it'll allow for stretching for the uh, horizontal and vertical, which like I said, a little odd. It kind of throws me off a little bit how it's structured. But generally, this is how the guide based works. So just putting that out there. And once again, I could always bring back my show parent overlay to see, you know, where was I? And, and where does where my original uh, parent look like? My eight and a half by 11 and even showing you the A parent. Where was that originally and how does that work? So that's kind of it. So hopefully that helps out a little bit in terms of which structure you might like to use. If you ever to were resize a page layout and needed the content to kind of flow with the new dimension, what would happen? Okay, so hopefully that assists you. And now we learn a little bit more about liquid page layout.